It's personal between me you, and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. Okay. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire probably presents something the boxing game's been missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, I wanted to do a video profiling the light flyweight division because um, shout out to my boy Rado K, you know, very loyal viewer of the channel over the years. I've respected him greatly over the years. Thank you for his, his comments because he's actually the one that inspired this video. So I'm giving him credit for helping inspire me to do this video. But uh, he, I wasn't alive recently. I think it was during the Kayaguchi Bermudez fight this past Friday. And he stated that, you know, he said, BT, you know, the light flyweight division, this is the most underrated division in, in boxing. You know, I was thinking about it to myself and I was thinking about all these guys who are champions. And I was thinking about how how little I've covered them. You know, how 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 even me, someone like me who, who hangs his hat on covering the sport of boxing as a whole, I don't have a lot of videos about Kayaguchi. I don't have a lot of videos about Ken Shiro. I don't have any videos about Jonathan Gonzalez, and he's the only Puerto Rican champion, you know? And up until Bam Rodriguez moved up, I really hadn't had any videos about him either. So uh, this video, this, this, he was right. Rado K is right. He, this is an underrated weight class in boxing, and you know what? I'm, I'm going to make a more concerted effort to cover it and, and, and be a lot more sharper as far as my knowledge of life, life flyweight because um, there's, some, there's some excellent fighters in this weight class, and I wanted to kind of just like discuss them discuss potential matchups in the future of this division. So, you know, we just had this great fight this past weekend with um, Hidoto Kayaguchi and Esteban Bermudez. You know, I really, really enjoyed it. You know, Bermudez was a very determined challenger who was coming off of a win, a great win over, uh, you know, Carlos uh, Canizales, you know, and, 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 and he fighting a guy like Kayaguchi, he was fighting him on home soil in Mexico. Kayaguchi as a, as a champion came back came to mexico to defend his belts and that's never an easy thing to do especially when you have a guy as determined as kai uh, as uh, bermudez and you know credit to him there was a lot of things that could have went wrong in the fight for him but he, he stayed calm and composed and he was able to uh, stop him despite point deductions and things like that and you know maybe even bermudez getting a second win in the fight so you know what's next for kai gucci i mean i don't know he could unify the titles either with ken shiro Jonathan Gonzalez, um, those those guys, and I think Bam may still have the WBC, or maybe it's vacant. I'm not sure what the what the whole situation with the WBC belt is at 108. But he has Ken Shiro, um, and he has Jonathan Gonzalez. Uh, now pivoting to Jonathan Gonzalez, let, let, let me let me let me really camp out on Jonathan Gonzalez for a little bit because uh, he's fighting next week um, in Florida at, in Kissimmee, Florida, at the Silver Spurs Arena, defending his belt for the first time against. Um, Miguel Bariga, who is, I believe, a uh, Filipino fighter, you know, 11 and 1. Uh, I hear great things about him. I don't know a ton about him, but I hear great things about him. I'll do more research on him as the fight gets closer. But, you know, this is a guy that, you know, people talk about how Puerto Rico this, Puerto Rico that. This guy is the only world champion in Puerto Rico, Puerto Rican boxing. Because Amanda Serrano, don't, don't, I don't think, I don't think Amanda Serrano has any belts anymore now that she lost to Katie. I could be wrong, so correct me if I'm wrong, but she lost to Katie, so... Either way, you cut it up, slice it, and dice it. This is the only male Puerto Rican world champion right now. And I joke with my dad sometimes because I'm very hard on these Puerto Rican fighters because, you know, being uh, partially of Puerto Rican descent, you know, and I grew up around Puerto Rican culture. So I, I, I really do respect Puerto Rican culture and whatnot. And, and I like to see Puerto Rican fighters do well, although it's not like I'm not sad that they don't. But, you know, uh, it's always good to see a Puerto Rican fighter doing well. Um, a lot of these Puerto Ricans in modern day boxing are ass, and they're not really that good. If I'm being honest with you, they're very, very uh, hyped up in the hype jobs, and I'm, I'm, I'm the harshest critic of Puerto Rican fighters, to be honest with you. Um, and I'm part Puerto Rican myself. As far if you want to talk about nationalities and descent, as far as that concerned, I'm, I'm really more American. I'm, I, I, I consider myself an American. I know Puerto Rico, being Puerto Rican and being American are the same thing, but you know, I grew up in America. I'm, I'm, I'm an American. Anyway, Jonathan Gonzalez is the only Puerto Rican world champion right now, right? He won the title in great fashion. He's, he's actually probably the only Puerto Rican fighter in recent memory who's won a big fight against a Mexican fighter. Because I don't really think Puerto Rico versus Mexico is a rivalry. Because a rivalry is when, you know, you know, one person wins and the other wins. And it's competitive. Puerto Rico versus Mexico hasn't been competitive. It's been played out. But Gonzalez gets extra, extra credit for winning a world title against a Mexican fighter and, and doing it in the fashion he did it. Because if you go back and you watch the Edwin Soto fight... Elwin Soto was a, you know, um, st strong fighter, determined fighter, comes forward with a lot of pressure. And Elwin Soto, you know, was, oh, hold on, fuck. My bad, guys. 
uh, I, I started going crazy because I, I forgot I had my sandwich in the oven and you know it got kind of burnt towards the end but you know all in all it's good we're gonna, we're gonna keep it going but uh like I was saying man uh yeah Edwin Soto was a very determined fighter and and, and Gonzalez showed a great ability to stay composed in the pocket um counter punching him um he showed a lot in that fight you know being someone that could box on the back foot box in the pocket could counter um and it was just, it was a brilliant way to win a world title uh, for him so you know as far as i'm concerned he, he deserves all the respect all the praise and all the adulation if he, if he can come through this fight with the with the you know tough filipino i would like to see jonathan gonzalez uh fight either Kayaguchi or Kenshiro. I think I think the Kayaguchi fight would be great because Kayaguchi's a, a excellent counter puncher in his own right and Kayaguchi's someone that you know he understands uh punching range and things like that. So I'll I'll love to see that fight. Kenshiro would be good too but Jonathan Gonzalez is definitely in the mix and he's a he's been one of the true warriors of Puerto Rican boxing for a long time. He's fought the likes of Kosai Tanaka. He's fought the likes of uh you know Giovanni Segura, Elwin Soto obviously so um very well tested very experienced and, and always want to fight the best. So respect to him. And I'm looking forward to seeing how he continues to develop in his career. So you got, you got him as well. You got Ken Shiro, who uh, has been, you know, champion the longest uh, of any of these guys. I mean, I know he just won his belt back, but I'm saying he had a long WBC title reign. You know, uh, he wound up losing to Masamichi Ibuki last year in a big upset. But then he avenged a loss in, in spectacular fashion when he knocked him out in two rounds. And a lot of people still think that Ken Shiro is the class of this division despite the loss. You know, Ken Shiro, uh, he can do it all. He can box, he can punch, he can slug, he's quick, he's agile, he's got, you know, super speed, super defense. You know, just a really, if we're talking about who may be the most aesthetically pleasing fighter to watch of the champions, he might be the guy that you look at. Because, um, you know, he's got a lot of things that really, really stand out about him, um, you know, as far as a fighter. And, and, and you know, I'm looking forward to seeing the second reign of Ken Shiro because... He he showed he could avenge the loss to Yabuki, and now it's about okay, can 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 he continue to can he have another reign, and can he can he reestablish himself as the number one guy in the division and really make it clear cut this time? Because you know now I think there's a beautiful opportunity for Ken Shiro and Hiroto Kayaguchi to come together, come together as fellow you know Japanese warriors, come together and make a big. Japanese super fight featuring both of them. I think that would be great for the country. I think that'd be great for this division. And I think it'd be great for boxing moving forward. So I'd love to see their styles clash. I think it'd be uh, just a hell of a fight. And then when you look at the rest of this division, you got guys like, you know, former champion Elwin Soto. You got, uh, you got, uh, Heki Butler, who, who I believe was a champion himself. Good fighter. Masamichi Yabuki, another former world champion, just, just lost the belt to, uh, you know, Ken Shiro. Uh, you got Esteban Ramirez, who, who's a very good fighter. You got Carlos Canizales. Um, and, and other fighters as well. So uh, there's a lot to look forward to in this weight class. And there's a, and, and, and there's even like other fighters who I've never heard of. Like there's this guy in Ring Magazine who, whose name I can't even pronounce, but he's like uh, Zvenati Nos. I can't even say his name. But there's a there's a ten and o, there's a ten and o guy with nine knockouts from South Africa whose name I can't pronounce right now. I'm gonna go. I want I want to go learn about him. This weight class will present present new challenges for me to learn more about boxing. And there's I think. There are a lot of underrated talent here that should be highlighted more. So we're gonna make starting with this video, we're gonna make that uh, a bigger priority here on True School Sports because we have, we have to cover as much of the sport as possible. I'm not, you know, there's other way, there's some weight class I know more than others, but I I still gotta give all the warriors the shine they they, they deserve because um these guys go out there and they they will they really go out there and they fight, especially the guys in the lower weight class. And you guys know how I feel about the lower weight classes. These guys really go out there and put it on the line because they don't have as much money available and they can't duck and dodge and be divas like Crawford and Spence. So uh, the fights happen. And, and before some of these big fights happen, these guys have already fought two, three, four, five times already. So, um, yeah, that's, that's just what it is. But uh, you guys let me know what you think in the comments down below about uh, the light flyweight division. Let me know who's your favorite fighter at light, light, light flyweight division in, in, a, at a, in the 108-pound division. Which fight would you want to see most and why? Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. Like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, Thank you around. for watching another video on True School Sports, the home of boxing. If you made it this far, do me a favor and do yourself a damn favor. Hit that subscribe button and surely you will not be disappointed. You know, True School Sports bringing you the latest and greatest, the untouchable, you know, boxing content, interviews, news videos, breakdowns, live fight reaction extravaganza. We've got a great community of, of people here. 
boxing fans all over the world from America to the UK to Australia and on and on and on. So join the empire today. Hit that subscribe button. Take care and God.